Bob Nagy here, AB5N. Today we're going to look at the new Flex 6300 Signature Series SDR transceiver. What an amazing piece of gear. It's just come out and uh, Flex has been a pioneer in the SDR arena for over a decade and the older radios, 1000, 1500, 3000, 5000, uh, 5, these are a whole sort of set of radios. All of a sudden there's a big design break and we have the new Signature Series 6300, 6500, 6700. Uh, all these are really interesting and solid products. Now Flex has been making commercial and military gear for a while now and that technology is more reflected of what's in the Signature Series of radios. Um, we're going to talk about how a Signature Series radio, in this case the 6300, is different from the previous radios in operation and how they're different from running a box with knobs. Um, in today's review I'm going to show you exactly how to run a 6300 top to bottom uh, so that if you do get one you'll already know how to operate it. Um, I'll also compare it with, for example, the 3000 as a representative of the older series of radios. And take a look at the operation feature set and of course the Power SDR software that runs the older set is pretty darn full featured already uh, and fleshed out as they call it. But but the uh, smart SDR is a younger piece of software and a lot of that stuff isn't implemented yet. And let's let's take a look at what isn't in there and what is in there. Um, then of course I'm going to answer the uh, the question. You know how does this thing run in real world operation? We're going to see it on the air and then I'm going to show you how to hook it up to a digital third-party software and that kind of stuff so the things that you're going to see right away and I need to know how to hook it up to this or that I'll show that to you. Um, I'm also going to give you a list of what I like and what I don't like in the radio. Uh, the software of course runs this radio and it's constantly evolving so this is just as of now this is early in the game and this is going to change and what's so great is we have direct feedback with the guys at Flex as to what features you want in there and what you found that doesn't work quite right or whatever it is and they, they keep coming out with revisions and additions and you just go ahead and load the stuff into the, uh, into the radio. Now I'm known for long reviews YouTube really doesn't like you to go that long. So I'm going to cut this up in two pieces, two easily digestible pieces. The end of the first one here, I will just put a link and you can click over to the second one. And I can't tell what the total time will be yet, but I hope it's worth watching. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the Flex 6300's home screen on Smart SDR. And let me show you all the controls and how to operate the radio. So here's our screen that sort of comes up as a default screen and it is what's called a panafall screen. That means you got your pan adapter on top, really a spectrum analyzer, and a waterfall on the bottom. And this is really the configuration that most Flex users have always used, including myself. Let's start at the top left over here. And this little uh, palette of panes up here, if you just click this arrow, it goes away and it includes some important stuff. Here's where you can add a second receiver plus receiver. That makes sense. I'll go ahead and do it. Actually, it's putting a second slice right here and you can slide it around in the same band. Now it's not adding another pan adapter and spectrum analyzer, a waterfall, but it is adding actually a second receiver right here next to the original one. You see one's red, one's yellow. This is the active transmit one indicated by this TX. And we want to get rid of this. We can just click the X there. Two notch filters, tunable notch filters, and these are little notch filters that you can put in the um, across the spectrum to notch out offending carriers that you find. And it's very, very novel and effective feature. You can adjust the depth of those, and they're persistent. They can stick around, or you can turn them off with this tunable notch filter global on-off switch. Turn them all on or all off. Here's your band selection. Pretty obvious what that is, including WWV and general coverage. And look at that expansion for uh, 2 and 450 through the transverter on the back. Your antenna selector, you go to antenna 1 or 2 in the back, or your transverter input. And this also includes what's called RF gain, which is really well, not RF gain in my book. It is the 20 dB preamp. And boy, does that baby work. Oh, it's, it's the best one I've ever seen. It's super clean. Bam, pulls those signals right out of the noise. And generally, you're not going to need it. When you get up uh, you know, above 12 meters, 10, 6, you can kick that baby in, especially if you're in a low background noise area. The display here has a lot of stuff. And that is the averaging on the uh, screen here on, I call it the Spectrum Analyzer, 
you see a lot of guys running it like this super real time i don't like that i kick a little averaging in look at that smooths it out you still have that real time effect but it's just easier on the brain here's your frames per second if i slide it down you can see that it's it's really going slow i find that an average speed of around 26 25 is really good for me and all this is now handled inside of the flex 600 a 6300 box so you know you can you can run it up exactly where you need it it's not taxing the processor in your pc average weighted just changes the way that the uh, pan adapter responds to incoming signals to sort of more accurately capture their peak level coming in i usually leave that off now here on the waterfall display controls you've got different color schemes the default but you can go to you can go to different uh, you know ones they've got a few ones here maybe in the future you can add some other ones well, the default works pretty darn good and you can also adjust the black back level over here. You can have it on auto, but you can adjust manually adjust it like this to really get what you like. There we go. And that would have to do with the incoming signal strengths. Play with it. There's the, the speed of the waterfalls too. You can slow it down or you can speed it up. And remember also that the waterfall can be in real time, but it can also be um, pushed into the past. Okay, you can see this indicator live over here, but you can you can actually scroll back and look back in time at the thing. Uh, the DAX is very important, the digital audio exchange. There are two modes of DAX and uh, what they are is it's sending the audio or uh, the IQ information to other third-party programs that you're going to be using. On this one right here, this is the IQ output. That means the in-phase and out-of-phase output of the raw spectral capture here being sent to a program like CW Skimmer are ones that need IQ input and you will know that when you use the program. There are several types of programs that require that and you basically just set up a channel, select it and bam, it's sending the data out. Um, that covers these up here. Now let's look at the slice itself. This is how you tune around. You actually have to hit these tiles again to turn off the little drop thing. You slide the slice around like this and you just pick a signal. That's one way of tuning. Or I can just click on a signal and get it. I'll turn the volume up a little bit here. Now, if I want to zoom in on that signal and take a look at it, what's really nice, of course, I'm looking at the waterfall. I can tell exactly the bandwidth this guy's transmitting. And I can grab this little slice and look at that conform it to the exact bandwidth that the guy's transmitting. Also, it's going to you know, pop up and show you what your bandwidth is there. Um, you can slide this around. And also, you can go into the flag up here where there's a lot of uh, control and data showing. I'll, I'll tell you what that's about. Type in there and put in your frequency, 14.23. Bam. Now, if I want to grab the background with, with the left mouse button, just move it. I can move the spectrum around there, then grab my slice and move it onto an existing signal. But look at this uh, flag up here. First, you can um, close this slice that you're using to receive by pressing the X. You can lock it so it can't move. You can record the audio right here or play it back. You've got your antenna selector over here, one, two, and your transverter input, your bandwidth that we're listening at. Whether to activate this is a transmit frequency. You can take the flag away with the A. On the bottom, you got your speaker controls, volume, left and right. Say I had two flags open. I was listening on two different places. I could make one of them on the left headphone and one on the right or speaker and split the signals up. Pretty cool, huh? This here is the AGC control. My oh boy, I call it the RF gain control since there isn't one really. And it really does the same thing as an RF gain. Here's your AGC time constants. We're all used to that. Feed it fast, medium, and slow. I'm finding that on this, I like medium for SSB. And when you turn it off, Watch your level can be high and your speakers will blast for a second. Bring that down on a very stable signal and you can have a really beautiful sounding income signal. On this right side are a whole bunch of control panels or panes I call them. And you can select which ones are going to display by selecting these buttons at the top. Now unless you have a really huge screen, I have a medium huge one, you can't see them all at the same time. You can see four out of five. So you can turn them off and they slide around. Pretty keen, huh? Now, I find that the equalizer setup here for transmit and receive 
you generally set it once and let it go and you're not going to need to mess with it much. So I'm not going to really need that. What I do need is the first four over here. And we go down from the top RF power output, SWR. Here's our RF power output slider control. So you can control your output power. Tune, MOX, ATU, and bypass. We're used to these over here. You want to kick it into tune. PTT with a MOX. Let's um, move the slice over to a quiet part of the band. And I'm going to show you the speed at which the antenna tuner works. It seems to go from a complete scratch tune, in other words, a full 10 second tune every time you hit it. I don't think that there's memories in there like there is on the 3000, 5000 series. That may be added later, but um, truthfully, if I go I'm pretty much at the same frequency and I hit that tuner again, we get a full 10 second tune before it locks. And when it does lock and it's successful, you'll see that it says success right above the ATU button. If it fails, it'll say fail. Or if your antenna is already resonant, it may just say abort or, or not do the tune. Your bypass is, you know, bypassing the tuner. So we get into the mic controls over here. Where's the audio coming from? The mic, oh, the line, accessory connector in the back. Okay, we got that. Here's the uh, gain control on that. If you want to come in from the accessory connector audio on the back, you click over here. Of course, it's, it's already telling me that. Um, the other thing is the DAX over here is if you're going to put uh, digital audio in uh, from a uh, DAX line, you need to click on this over here. And then you have your monitor, which we're used to. You want to monitor your signal. I'm just going to jump back up really quickly, and I, I uh, need to show you the rest of these on the uh, pane up here on the, on the flag. These are the DSP controls. you got noise blanker, noise reduction, automatic notch filter, and adjusters for each. Your, uh, this is a duplicate. Of course, you can select your mode over here, and you can select your bandwidth. Your XIT RI controls, RIT controls with your, your adjusters there, and the audio DAX. So you, you select a channel, I'm selecting one, and this is the DAX that sends digital audio to programs like Digipan, uh, FL Digi, Multi PSK, your PSK31 stuff. What's, what you need to remember is that one channel handles both transmit and receive. So when you set up your other program, you're going to set up the uh, input and output to the same channel, DAX1 for receive, DAX1 for transmit. Let's go back down here on this pane over here. We've got your AM carrier control for your, when you're doing AM transmit. Vox sensitivity and Vox on and off. Now Vox does work in digital modes. So you can set up, which I'm going to show you the smart cat interface so you can come in on a serial port and key the, uh, key the radio from an external program. But the truth is, you just kick this Vox on, it works in the digital modes and I just put the sensitivity up, and as soon as that outboard program sends audio to the uh, smart SDR, if you have that DAX channel selected over there, it will key the radio up. So there's nothing illegitimate about doing it that way. Um, I have worse in digital mode. Let's go over to USB so I can show you this. The downward expander. Now, this is not a noise gate. This is for transmit audio, and what it does is it ratchets down the gain when you're in the quiet parts, when you're not talking. So what you do is key up, don't talk, slide up the slider until you don't hear any background noise. And that effectively increases the dynamic range and that super clean sound on transmit. Transmit bandwidth down here goes from zero, and the adjuster goes up to 10 kilohertz. I haven't tried on the air yet uh, exactly how wide this thing will transmit, but of course anything over three kilohertz here in sideband is uh, certainly questionable. Let's go down to this very important pane down here. It's a sort of duplicate and expansion on the flag on top of the slice. You got your audio level control, left right speaker, your AGC time constant and adjuster here, which is really the RF gain. This is the step, and that means that your flag, your slice uh, that you move around, will automatically click in different modes to these, these nice little detent increments. Okay, it could be 100 hertz, 50 hertz, whatever it is. And you can set them different for each mode. And here's your mode selector over here. Again, you got your record and playback, lock it, lock the frequency, your bandwidth receive selections. But this is what's interesting. Here's a visual display of your bandwidth. And you can, I'll crank the volume up a little bit again. Let's pick a signal here so we can see something. Here's something going on. And none of these are real strong right now. And we can grab this, grab the top side and adjust the top side of the pass band. We can get the four-way little thing and do an, sort of a, effectively an IF shift. And we can adjust the bottom edge of the pass band up and down. So we can really customize what we're looking at. These right here are just a duplicate of the rest of the stuff on the uh, 
flag on top of the slice, your RIT, XIT, noise blanket, noise reduction, and automatic notch filter. If I was in CW, it would be automatic peaking filter. So it shows, shows the appropriate stuff. And of course, Smart SDR is smart. It knows which radio it's connected to, and it gives you the features that it can handle. Last thing on the main display here are these three controls. This is a new complete <laughs> receiver. I'm going to kick it on. And there we go. We have another complete pan adapter and waterfall display, which can be put on a completely different frequency. I'm going to go to, uh, I wanted to go to 11.175 for your uh, McDill Air Force Base there. And now these are of equal size. If I said, well, really, I sort of want to, you know, I really want to focus on one of them and not the other. I can hit the little minimize thing here like you have on a Windows pane, and my top one would be my sort of main one. I've got the transmit enabled. I can see more of it. And there we go. we got the uh, military guys coming in. Want to maximize him right away? Bam. And look, he's wider transmit bandwidth, and I'm listening. I'll go ahead and grab this and customize it right to the bandwidth that it's showing on the waterfall. Oh, boy, that's nice. So I've got all the controls duplicated there, and I want to you know, get rid of that. Bam, just hit the X, and I'm back into the single receive mode up here. Let's go back into USB. And, of course, you can get the uh, you know, rotating tuner from Flex or your Flex Tune edition, and you can just have a rotating tuning dial to select on a regular rig to move around the band. The uh, last thing I'm going to show you really quickly is backing out to where we can see a heck of a lot of bandwidth all at once. Now I'm looking at under 11 megahertz to 17.5 or above. And see, I said when I zoomed way out, the noise floor moved around, and I need to bring it down a little bit more. Wow, we're looking at a lot of spectrum here. We could be looking at the AM broadcast band. We're looking at the entire uh, 11 megahertz shortwave band over here, the entire 13 megahertz shortwave band. Uh, move that guy around like this, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And now I'm looking at the entire 11 megahertz shortwave band. Oh, I jumped around a little bit there. There's 13 megahertz shortwave band. I have to click on any of those signals and uh, kick it back into AM. And there we go. And I could have two of these complete pan adapters and waterfalls open looking at two different 7 megahertz slices. So 14 megahertz of visualization all at once. And in AM, it does have the uh, synchronous record over here. You have to be right on frequency and it will lock in and sort of take out all of the uh, little steps, you know, a little, I mean, a little bit of uh, pumping and AGC and all that stuff. It just locks it in and keeps the, uh, the drifting to a minimum. It does roll off the bass a little bit when you kick it on, but it, it does really make it sound overall a lot better. Well, there's all you need to know to operate this radio.